Phones of America and live from the GND Show Studio. This is your work, Ghost Man and Demon Hunter Show. Doesn't that sound exciting to you? Welcome back, listeners around the world. It does sound exciting to me. This is Sunday night. Listeners around the world, welcome back to your mystifying oracle of radio, the Ghost Man and Demon Hunter Show. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. That's right, folks. Every week you come and join us here as Sean and I rock our own little self centered universe. Thank you for joining us. Self centered. <laughs> I think we've had more people. We've helped more people's careers on this show than ours. <laughs> huh? Our career just keeps going down and down, and everybody else, you know, they they Damn. call us and go, "Hey, thanks for having me on your show. I just got a contract for a new ten episode TV show." I don't know. Yeah, well, congratulations to them. That's <laughs> Guys, welcome back. This is, like I said before, the Mystifying Oracle Radio, where the hits keep hidden. Is that what I'm supposed to say? The hits keep hidden. The hits keep coming. Hits keep coming. The hits keep coming. I heard a radio show one time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Right now on the Ghost Man and Demon Under Show, the hits keep coming. The hits keep coming. Now, I heard something like that when I was uh, a tater tot. When I was real little, I heard that uh, the hits keep running. There was a DJ. There was a local DJ here in Indianapolis, and he used to come on. When you were about six years old and could only fit in a men's like medium. Right, in the husky section at Sears, buddy, or Kmart. <laughs> Remember that? Are we going to revisit this? Are we going to revisit this? My husky years? After my sure, 20 years not? of counseling? Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Jesus. What the world need best friends like you for, huh? With, with hey, that friend, hey, how do you think I feel? I was the same height that I am now in my junior high school, but I only weighed 122 pounds. So. Well, chicks dig height, though. I mean, if you got to get your pants in because you're too tubby. It kind of takes something off your game. <laughs> I wasn't. Yeah, but they didn't cu- have men's pants with like, uh, you know, a twenty-four inch waist when I was in eighth grade. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But uh, you know, I uh, I trimmed I trimmed the fat a little bit. You know. Now I'm just telling. I always said if I'm on a desert island when I was a kid, if I got stranded, I'd have been okay. <laughs> yeah, you could have lived off of your own uh, your own chubby for what months. Chubby, we like to call it my own husk, sir. That's what we call it, my huskiness. So what's going on, Demon Hunter? It's Sunday night. Like I mentioned again, uh, it's been a beautiful day here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, what's it been like out there in uh, Seatown? It's been warm. It's been, it, it's, in my opinion, it's been summer. A lot of people have been telling me that it's not summer, that it is, in fact, uh, too cool for their taste. But uh, I tell you, I go outside and it's like 78 degrees and the humidity is only at about 35, 40%. I'm in heaven. Really? Yeah. You're in heaven. Heaven. Well, yeah. I mean, I like the fall weather and, uh, and all that stuff. That's why I stay in the state, the great state of Indiana. I mean, there's nothing out here. Remember, they told us, hey, guys, you want to be closer to, uh, you know. What they say? They said, you guys got something. You got something, but you need to move to L.A. To- <laughs> it's like, okay, bro, let me pack it up and just yeah, let's- Let's sell our homes yeah, yeah. and leave everything we know for a two-week contract. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get ready for that. Yeah. yeah, just like the Clampets. If we hit it big, we could move in with the Clampets. We're, we're huge in Manila. I don't see us packing up and moving to Manila, do I? Yeah, what happened to, what happened to those days when you used to... Uh, who dare? Who ha- what happened to those days when you used to say, Hey, man, tonight we're big in China. Well, oh, those were the days when I actually uh, had control of our archives, where now our archives are taken over and controlled and most generously provided to us for no cost, I might say, awesome. by the wonderful people at Planet Paranormal. That's so right. I don't have the same access to, there you to go. check that. And we pay for a different type of production stuff that we use during the show. But special thanks to YouTube, of course, keeping it free, guys. And uh, Ustream. 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 You stream, you stream, Planet Paranormal, you, um, YouTube, all the ways you folks get to hear us, because uh, we spend every last dime we have yeah. keeping the show on the air to begin with. And XM Radio, really oh afford- wait, that's too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Who dare? Who dare? Hey, Who ask dare? the guys in the, do we got anybody in the chat room tonight? 
do we? Uh, we've we've got a couple of our friends. We've got our old friends from Celtic Tavern in there, uh, but uh, you know drunk. everybody else is logged in as a guest, so I don't guest. Know. Well, ask one of our guests or somebody that can respond how the sound is, guys. We went. I went out this week and I bought a new soundboard for the GD Show Studios. We did. We dug into the budget, and uh, we got a new board. And uh, it sounds a little hot over here, Nate, but, uh, you know, we're going to go with it, guys. If it's too but, hot in the uh, archives, they just have to turn down their <laughs> turn down their headphones. You know, it sounds hot on your side, but I'm telling you, on my side, it sounds better than it has in a long time. Better so. it has? Better than it has in a long time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Well. Hey, by the way, I proved myself to be a total, total. Yeah. And by total, I mean 100%, you know, no artificial additives added to the addition uh nerd this weekend all right and i voluntarily Did that need to be proven? <laughs> went to the renaissance fair ah, hold on hold on hold on uh hold on i'm waiting Silent uh, it's the rating. wrong one Hoo-ha. hold on hold on you, you you sex demon <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, John, you know, in, in my life of uh, chasing around, uh, oh, you know what, uh, just to throw out there, Ghost Chaser, so I said chasing around, and there's Ghost Chaser p- logging into the uh, chat room, Yeah. but um, what up? just you know. uh, because I have spent so much time over the years working in every kind of job I could find, Sure. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, folks, when you travel around the country, you were carny, uh, yeah, I was carny. When you travel around the country and your sole goal is to spend as much time with people who report unusual appear, um, I don't know, apparitions, monsters, legends, oh, good odd beliefs, <laughs> you, you don't know what they're uh, actually saying is out there. When, when you're living with all that, going around and trying to live and uh, experience all those wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, you really got no choice but to take whatever job you can get. To buy underwear. One of those jobs over the years has been in the Renaissance Fair. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had the wonderful lady. job of selling sky chairs. Uh, these are chairs that are kind of like hammocks that hang from your ceiling. Um, my particular sky chair that I sat in was hung from the, uh, the ceiling of the... Uh, the second floor and there were rafters in between so i could look down and yell at all the uh, people coming in and i could tell them buy a sky chair you loser uh but the best part of that job was you know all the women wear bodices so i had a really good view looking straight down but uh i went back to the renaissance fair this weekend and i went and what uh back in my rainy days would be called danes i went in my normal everyday clothes my mundane clothes mm-hmm. And uh, it was interesting because when I worked at the Renaissance Fair, of course, they know you work there, so they don't pay attention to you. But when you're dressed like somebody who's a paying customer, my, 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 how they pay attention to you. And uh, I had a lot of fun uh, going and re-experiencing my youth that way. Did you have fun? Don't be a moron. Did you, uh, what else did you do? I mean, what do you do at a Renaissance Fair? Well, I particularly went to take pictures. You know, it, okay. uh, like I said, I haven't been, wor- I haven't worked in a Renaissance fair in what twenty years. So it uh, it was kind of nice to go back and take pictures. And funny thing is, saw so many people that worked there when I worked there, and they still work there. So uh, now that's listen, becoming- I dig the chicks with the bodices, right? Because you know me. I'm a I'm a, a boog man. We'll just come out and say, it. and when they wear those. Now, is it the bodice that does the pushing, or is it the, uh... Well, the bodices do do the pushing. Sure, you can wear a corset as well. A corset goes under, the bodice goes over, the clothing. Um, okay. But the, uh, the, the bodices, you know, there's, there's a saying that a bodice can give oh, a man green. really nice cleavage because they push so tight. In your case, you don't need the I don't bodice. Know. To do the good <laughs> I've never seen. Like, you know, people that never met me are going to think I'm like 300 pounds deep. <laughs> We always came out with the fat jokes. Guys, I'm not 300 pounds. I'm a very good-looking, handsome man. I shouldn't be behind the... If you haven't seen our... I throw the fat jokes at Sean. Sean throws the old jokes at me. It's uh, it's just the way it is, folks. It, Sean is, in fact, uh, a svelte husky What's man. Uh, <laughs> you can call me fat anytime. Husky. Husky, not fat. What's... Husky man. Yeah. But, uh, no, it was, it was very interesting. And uh, 
I think I probably should have gotten more photos of uh, bodices and things like that now that you mention that, Sean. Did you show up at the fair and say, uh, I'm here for the gangbang? (laughs) (laughs) The funny thing is, is, like I said, I went in my everyday clothes. When, uh, when When I used to work there, a common hello between a man and a woman was a open mouth kiss, where now... You know, people looked at me, and uh, you know, I didn't fit into that crowd. But did you did you run up and give an open mouth? Yeah, but he didn't like it. <laughs> anyway, I, oh, you beat me to it. You're uh, stealing my thunder, to, man. You're stealing uh, my thunder. Anyway, he, <laughs> but yeah. this time I kind of went to get more pictures because in all the years I worked there, I never went to any of the things like the the joust, okay, or the chess game. Or any of those things where they go and they they act out the stuff because I worked there. You didn't you didn't go to those things if you worked there. So this time I went to get pictures of that stuff, and uh, I gotta say it's uh, we could probably find a few local legends inside of a Renaissance Fair if we tried there, Sean. What like at the actual uh, location or I, mean, I think the actual people could fit into a few local legends. Oh wow, <laughs> it's like Big Jim Cannon, huh? <laughs> Oh, not quite, uh, not quite the freak show that I went to the week before, but uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely they are a personality of their own, and they deserve your respect. Otherwise, they'll probably shiv you in the parking lot. What now? What is <laughs> what is shiv? Oh, are you talking about knifing? Okay, shank, shank, shank. Yeah, yeah we do. I, I have a shiv. I shank. You know you. you I guess shiv is the noun and shank is the verb. You shite. <laughs> you shite your pants. <laughs> ah, shiv shite. I'd shite myself if someone tried to shiv me in the parking lot. Wouldn't you? Uh, well, I, I'm i sorry, John. I was just looking over to the chat room, and uh, Celtic Tavern was saying nothing was on yet. Let me go on here and say refresh. Hmm. We should be on the air. Because um, yeah. Nitro Jill is in there as well, and she's she seems to be able to see us. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Demon Hunter. Let's take a real quick break, man. Let's take like uh, one song, and then uh, we'll come back. Let me check something out here real quick, okay? Okay. And just give a real quick break, guys. We'll be right back. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Okay, we're back, guys. Sorry about that. Nathan, can you hear me, man? I can hear you, Sean. Back. Sorry about that, guys. I wanted to check something out. I had to, I tried something new. Uh, I tried something new on the... Um, and whenever oh. Sean does that, you know, his fiance has complaints afterwards. <laughs> no, I tried something new, and I, I thought we was going to play uh, a little clip tonight, and I didn't know if it was messing us up. Did they say in the chat room? Uh, well, Nitro Jill is in there, and she's, uh, she can hear us, and uh, okay. you know, Ghost Chick can hear us just fine. And I, I got to correct myself. I said Celtic Tavern, because you remember we used to have somebody who came in called Celtic Tavern. Now we got Celtic. Cleric Tavern. Cleric. Cleric Tavern is in there, Cleric. and... Uh, yeah, they, yeah. they can't. They can't hear us, but I think they need to ref to click on the UStream link and refresh their page. Refresh but hey, I got two page, things to yes. cover with you there, there, Sean. Before I go on, let me just say oh. before uh, before we get too far into it, guys. Tonight's music—they're getting a lot of playtime today. Now, it's out of the ordinary. Uh, here comes the Mummies, guys. Second week in a row, uh, me and Nathan decided to promo this band because we love them so much, guys. We love you. There you go, and uh, hope to see you soon in Ohio. Big, uh, big shout out to you and big, uh, big band. We love them. <laughs> Now, the first thing I just wanted to cover to end my uh, my Renaissance Fair conversation yeah. is I'm probably the only guy who can go into a Renaissance Fair. Well, not the only guy, but the only guy who was there that day who went into a Renaissance Fair and had the actors coming up and complimenting me on my facial hair. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, we're talking about the, uh, the... The big handlebar mustache thing going on that I started growing. But uh, The camel... <laughs> Handlebar. Handlebar. Handlebar mustache. I wish I had a penciled in mustache. Wasn't that a uh, Jimmy Buffett song? <laughs> Probably. Huh? What wasn't a Jimmy Buffett song? Uh, uh, but uh, the other thing I, I wanted to talk about was the actual song you played tonight. Yeah. Uh, you, the one I you played twice? Do you seriously, Sean? I do. I, I, I do. I, I think they're real. I, I just know I, I, I myself, growing up, where I grew up, the Pennsylvania Deutsch, pretty much based on superstition. Yeah. Um, you know, if you ever drive past one of those barns that uh, has the big symbol on the top of it, you know, that's a Pennsylvania Deutsch. Sure. They did yeah. some of that in uh, Warlock. Remember that old movie? Right. They were right. out in Pennsylvania, and the, the, the uh, Amish or the whoever it was, Mennonites, whatever, they had had that sign, and they said, oh, no, we all, yeah, okay, anyway, proceed. So. They, um... But they the definitely hell? have, uh, you know, a lot of superstitions. Yeah. And so I, even though my mother despises superstitions, she thinks uh, that they're just wrong. They're putting your faith. She believes superstitions are putting your faith in evil. But, uh, uh, you know, I have my superstitions. One of them is the salt over my shoulder. If I spill salt, you're darn right. It's going over my shoulder. Heck, if I even open one of those little uh, packets of... They sell the they when you buy a burger and it comes with a little packet of salt on the side. Yeah, yeah. If I only use half that salt, I throw the rest of it over my shoulder because I don't want to waste it. <laughs> you so you use half the salt packet? Well, heck, it's about two pinches anyway, right? So who are you calling a psycho? Exactly. <laughs> the guy with the uh, the clips on the radio. Yeah. Who are you calling a psycho? <laughs> Nathan, apparently. No, the. Uh, the, the saw, you know, that that's kind of weird because if you take the saw and you uh -huh. throw it over, is it your left shoulder or your right shoulder? What is that? Your left shoulder. But only if you spill it, right? You don't, like, salt your fries and then just one to grow on, right? Well, it's it basically if you waste salt, you throw a pinch over your shoulder because that helps keep the, the witches away. The witches away. Okay, now, no offense to half our guests that came on in the past. We don't want you to stay away. We'll, you, we will have you back on. You know... <laughs> That's another uh, thing. You know, there was that whole movement that started in the late 80s, early 90s, and I respect it where they're like, witches are good, and that's fine, folks. But, you know, the, you know, lots of things have uh, multiple <laughs> You could say different things about them. Like, uh, you could say Sean Burris is a nice guy, and at the same time, you could say he's a pain in the ass. And, oh. oh. But it's the same thing. It gets two different definitions. Punch there can be good witches. There can be bad witches. And the term witch is witch. So, uh, Whatever. We just lost our booking engagements with yeah, the, the witch, uh, okay. Wiccan I Nation. I talked or myself whatever. in a corner with that. No, but yeah, that's the... It ke okay, let's put it this way. You ruined it! If you throw salt over your shoulder, yeah. it keeps the evil witches away. Well, that's what I was saying. It's supposed to be good luck, too. Let's say you're sitting at a bar, and you're eating that great bar food, right? You got a big, fat, sloppy Joe sandwich with some hot French fries, and you you see a hot chick or something, and you knock over the salt shaker. Oh, no, I spilled it everywhere. What's Nathan going to do? You're going to pick up a handful, and you're going to throw it over your left shoulder, right? 
Two pinches. Two pinches over your left or right shoulder? Left. Okay, we said it was left. Okay, ring the bell. See, that's my superstition. Every time I get something right, I ring the bell. Uh, Wait, so that bell shouldn't ring that often, right? <laughs> okay, I, I just answered you. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's say it's supposed to be good luck. And you throw this over your shoulder. Now, let's say that good-looking chick you were just staring at has like a 352-pound bodybuilding Goliath of a boyfriend. And you hit him right in the eye with that saw. Does that okay. still happen to be good luck? Will you be protected? Yeah, because now he's blinded. I can get away. Mm. I thought he would like split your skull while you're sinking into your chili cheese fries. You know? No, no. But... Uh, it, the, my superstitions have gotten me in trouble. I remember when I first uh, <laughs> met one of my friends, we, uh, an ex-roommate, we were sitting there, and he came in, and he was getting ready for work, and he set his shoes on the table. Yeah. And, like, that's the worst possible bad luck. And I, I just lit- I stood up and knocked his shoes off the table. I was like, what, are you crazy? And we got in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm running the soundboard. What do you expect? Sometimes I, sometimes I get a wrong one queued up, man. <laughs> You know, I was reading a, I was reading a, um, this comeback from a, a couple of years back, and we've we've been on the air going on seven years now. And we've had a lot of reviews and a lot of happy people, a lot, a lot of not so happy people, <laughs> with our report, uh, performance, whatever. But um, this one cat was, <laughs> I was just messing around one day on the internet, and I looked up Ghost Planet Demon Hunter show, and this guy did a review, and he was talking about us he was saying man these guys got a great chemistry you got to check them out and the hottest thing out there you got to and they said except for sean's excessive playing <laughs> of sound bites the show <laughs> is a hundred percent spot on and worth a listen and <laughs> i thought wait a minute here hey, this guy's attacking me <laughs> guys the reason we do the sound clips me and nathan first of all we created this show ghost man and demon her show is me and nathan and uh, when we did this nathan and i we got a professor on tonight. Let's be. Uh, let's try to be professional here. Um, we decided we were going to do this the way we want to do it and have fun with it. And you guys have loved it. You guys have loved it till now. And uh, we're not going to make everybody happy. But uh, and, and Sean and I don't always tell each other what we're going to bring out uh, for the first time. So there have been times where, like, Sean has played a soundbite where I wasn't <laughs> expecting it, or. Uh, you know, I've, I've brought up something that he didn't know was coming up. And afterwards, we, we've got on the phone and be like, what were you thinking? <laughs> I remember that one I didn't edit and you were talking. You got lost in a story or whatever. And you kept, you kept talking. And I, <laughs> and I didn't have time to edit. And he said, what the was he talking about? <laughs> and I just said, mark it. <laughs> mark the time, baby, because I knew you'd have to go back and edit that. Oh, man. And you, yeah, I the, think that's, the airwaves uh, never I, been I, I so. Think, <laughs> six years on the radio with you. That was my one big blurp, and <laughs> you could tell I didn't go through and edit that. Huh? <laughs> I was like, oh no, man, I did. But um, no, and uh, what was the very first clip that we used to play on the air? It used to be, you know, the comments of Sean Burris do not represent those of Ghost Man, Demon Hunter, or their affiliates because I played that one every week. Yeah, that's true. We did do that a lot. We've cleaned it up quite a bit. That that had, that was on permanent queue on the uh, system there. Mm-hmm. Now that we're getting better and better, I'll be able to put on sound clips. So the entire show will just be sound clips, folks. You won't hear us talk ever again. It'll just be Sean and I playing sound clips at each other. Oh, I wanted to tell you, Demon Hunter, big props to uh, a couple people here in Indianapolis. Uh, they put on a uh, paranormal meet and greet. Uh, every year, and I, I've never been, and uh, you know we've kind of always, you know, went to the beat of a different drummer, and we've done a lot more than paranormal, so we don't always make it to a lot of these paranormal events. But I did show up. I went out there yesterday with a friend of mine, and I was, we didn't have a booth or anything. I was just walking around. And uh, to the fans we met yesterday, thank you guys so much. I had a couple come up, Demon Hunter, and say they uh, still listen. They like the show. They love the show. See, I, I still, it still gets me that they always recognize you and no one ever recognizes me. <laughs> I, I actually had one person recognize me once, ever. And they walked up to me and said, aren't you the guy that did that TV show where you guys like put your friend in a straitjacket <laughs> and you, you like uh, buried your friend alive and you, you, you lit the prison on fire and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that was me. She goes, wow, can I see all your tattoos? <laughs> like, and you said, no, that's Sean Burris. I'll, I'm show, you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. What. what do you want, man? I painted my face in our logo. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do nothing else. I painted my face. Nobody even knows I'm in the logo. But uh, 
Anyway, uh, big props, guys. Uh, it was That's a great actually not Sean Burris, folks. That's our friend Doug Jones. Doug Jones. <laughs> from, uh, yeah. Yeah, from, from uh, all kinds of stuff. Hellboy. From every movie out there. No, no, it's not Doug. It's he's, he's done. No, it's not Doug. We love Doug, though. We love Doug. Doug's a, Doug Doug's is good. good. Doug is good. But uh, yeah, I met a lot of... It reminded me of the old days. You know, I walked around and met a lot of people. One guy was trying to sell me on a... Uh, he had a, uh, a video that he had done. You know, a lot of independent uh, production out there in the paranormal these days. And they are, uh, you know, within their own right. Uh, interesting. And... Um, he was telling me about it. Real interesting, you know. It kind of took me back to the. I see a lot of exciting, excited faces out there, and people that had been in it. You know, this guy had been in. It. He said I had been doing this for three years, and I thought, wow, <laughs> you got a long way to go, brother. Uh, but you know, that's when the, not long way to go to learn, but you know, a long way to go to find out what's out there in the paranormal. So uh, <laughs> I've seen a lot well, of the interesting thing in the paranormal are the people who work in it. Absolutely, guys. Stay true to the paranormal. Don't worry about the rest because that'll ruin it for you. Yes. 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 Demon Hunter. I did mention tonight's, Ghost, uh, tonight's band, didn't I? You did. I, I think we should mention tonight's guest. You think so? Uh, probably. We're, we're, we're a half hour into the show. <laughs> well, we went off on our own. Listeners around the world, without further ado, Demon Hunter. Dun, 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 dun. GD Nation, tonight's guest. Am I doing it? <laughs> no, no, not at all. You're not going to do that. Let's see here. Uh, I'm just I'm wondering what that dead air is. Well, the dead air is uh, this, the I guess. Board, uh, is it? You're Here we learning go. the new board as we go, aren't you? <laughs> Here we go. Tonight's guest! You ready, Demon Hunter? I'm always ready. <laughs> this is a great one, guys. Tonight's guest actress, Carrie Noonan. She's a professor now at Champlin College and a former actress. She is best known for appearing in the role of Paula in Friday 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Her only starring role was in the episode of Message, A Message from Charity, guys, which is where I first fell in love with Carrie Noonan. Uh, she played a little pilgrim girl. I'll tell you all about it later. Uh, she was from the tw television series The New Twilight Zone, guys. She also appeared in episodes of Taxi, The Facts of Life, all about the facts of life, family ties, St. Elsewhere, murder she wrote, and she had reappearing, uh, reappearing roles on China Beach and Knott's Landing. Noonan received a bachelor's degree in theater arts from UCLA, and she shared an acting award with Tim Robbins. Uh, she returned after her acting career to pursue her master's and PhD degrees in folklore and mythology at UCLA, guys. So, tonight's storm... Tonight's storm. Tonight's get. What am I talking about? Oh, tonight's <laughs> meteor shower. Check it out. Yeah, that's something we got to talk about. Tonight's guest, guys, Carrie Noonan. It's a good one for me. I love Carrie. She's uh, got to talk to her on the. Uh, got to talk to her on the phone a couple times. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those things again where Mr. Burris had a crush on somebody I and invited him on the show. It's Carrie Noonan, the actress, <laughs> professor, right up our uh, alley there, Demon Hunter. Folklore. Really, it did. It, it, you know, when you first sent me the information, I was like, okay, this is cool. She did, uh, you know, uh, what was it? Um, Friday 13th, part six. Friday the 13th, the and new Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. I see that's, ooh, professor of folklore and mythology. Okay. Now. now we got it. Now we got it. Yeah, but she's coming on tonight. I was so, uh, it was hard to get a hold of Carrie because with some of these great actresses, uh, when you know, when they leave the career, like she went back to pursue uh, her master's and bachelor's, uh, back at UCLA, they kind of get out of the limelight and they go undercover. And uh, much like we did, Demon Hunter, without the Masters and Bachelors of <laughs> Folklore. Yeah, we kinda, the, she wasn't asked to go undercover. We were. <laughs> yeah, we were so debated. But no, she uh, she was great. And I had to go through uh, her, uh, uh, her husband's, uh, he's another... Uh, the famous cat that does something else, and I had to go through his booking people he, to get a hold of him. He was the uh, a member of the formerly noted Irish band, yes, Gaelic Storm. Absolutely, absolutely, great band too. Great band. Shout out to her husband. Great guy. I would have, I would have assumed you knew that, Sean. It's, uh, well, I did, but I wasn't going to mention it on the air. I didn't know. <laughs> ah, we're not playing their music. <laughs> exactly. We can get sued now, Gary. Don't uh, don't let your husband sue us, please, God. But. Uh, uh, the he thing can about, have half my banana. He can have my new uh, mixing board. It's not working right anyway. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, Carrie got a hold of her, and it took a while because, like I said, I had to go through his booking agent, and finally, I must have sounded like a weirdo. I was like, "Hey, man, I love your music. Listen, this might sound like a weird, weird request." <laughs> 
I'm trying to get a hold of your wife. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I finally heard back from Carrie, and I tell you what, Demon Hunter, we've had a lot of amazing people on here. Carrie is going to be one of them. I mean, she lets you into her life. She says, come on in, and uh, she's so interesting, uh, interested in some of the projects we got going on in, in the show, and she is like the neighbor next door. You know how usually we got to deal with booking agents. Uh, the agent calls and says, okay, guys, 30 minutes. <laughs> you know, and, uh, 30 minutes, and I'm going to be listening on the line, yeah. and can we get approval before you put it on the air? Yeah, and, no, it, it's uh, a live show, folks. Yeah, it's, it's live. Not much playroom. And then I always love that. Well, can we talk to him for five minutes just to brief him, you know, about the segments on the show? And nope, not possible. Too busy. Okay. Well, uh... you know, I got to say, I, I do have to say that, you know, with all the people that we've had on this show and, uh, you know, how most people want to go through their agents want to control everything we do. And, you know, that's the agent's job. You and I ho hopefully will one day have agents, Sean, and that'll be their job. Well, I think we're box. known throughout Hollywood. There's a poster of the G&D show that says, not these guys, because we always run over. <laughs> agents hate us, man, because we always but run. It's the guest. The guest gets into talking to us, and they don't want to leave. But like when Michael Rooker came on yeah, Mike. and, uh, and Don Wildman and their agents were texting us going, okay, your 30 minutes are up. Your 30 <laughs> minutes are up. I told her, I said, oh, I am so sorry, but I don't leave my phone on during the the live broadcast you know i i just don't do uh, it. Oh, i was actually in communication with uh, don's agent going um he's the one talking we can't get him to stop you know and, which was wonderful and we loved that and we you know we don't mind if a guest wants to talk tell us what you have to say but i mean Mike just basically, we said, we know you only have 30 minutes, and he was like, ah, hell with it. Let's keep talking. Yeah, <laughs> Mike was awesome, man. And, and Mike was a, uh, yeah, he's a huge star. He's working on some great stuff right now, Demon. He, he is. I, I was reading online that uh, Rooker, our buddy Mike, he, he uh, got picked up by Marvel. And he's, uh, which Marvel, of course, I believe is owned by Disney now, but they're working on a new episode of... Oh, so Marvel Studios. Marvel Studios, yeah, okay, there you go. Working on a new episode of, what's that called, Demon Hunter? What is it, uh, Galaxy Defenders, or what was it? It's a Marvel-type show. Uh, you don't have to Google it, but it's, yeah, he's going big time. He's going, uh, of course, Walking Dead wasn't big enough, apparently, so now he's, <laughs> I mean, he's exploded. And, you know, the good thing about, if you guys didn't listen to the Michael Rooker interview... You get things here on the Ghost Man and Demon Hunter Show you will not get anywhere else. Uh, listeners around the world uh, that GND Nation has been listening to us for years know that because we always ask the questions, what did you do before you got into Hollywood? What did you do uh, you know, outside of acting and everything? I mean, he told us everything. He said he was cleaning the floors at, a, at an apartment complex, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and now he started taking off, man. We, so. uh... We... I remember, uh, what was it, with Don Wildman, he, we were talking to him, and he was just like, well, let me go and do it. I, I, he was telling us all the stories, and then he's like, wait, this is a paranormal show. Let me tell you this. <laughs> yeah, he loved it, man. Uh, Don Don was another one. We got to get him back on. He's a, he's a friend of the show, and Don said, uh, we got it on tape, Don, so you can't deny it. He said, I'll come back on any time, <laughs> fellas. I always love that when they say it, because I'll say, well, hold on, I got a clip to play for you real quick when I'm trying to book you through your agent again. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, Demon Hunter. Then the agents go, well, they say that to everybody. No, I've listened to his other shows. He never says that. He didn't. He never said that. I, I, I think they get a relief when they come on our show because they do a lot of internet broadcasting. There's a lot out there, guys. And there's uh, Top Shelf, Second Shelf, and then I think the sh Third Shelf's out there. There's the well. <laughs> <laughs> there's the well. And, you know, anybody with the microphone does pick up this. And that's awesome because it is a hobby and it's fun. Hey, when we, when we first got into this, we were, you know, down there in the well. And we it was our friends up there on the uh, – top shelf and second shelf who pulled us up and showed us to helped us get our feet and you know what and then we uh we took over like we the, took uh, over and now it's ours like it's the muppets ours. baby we start at the bottom and work our way to the top and that's what we did <laughs> i think we're on the top anyway it's uh <laughs> It's hard to get any feedback out there. But we do get a lot of fans writing this, guys. Thank you so much for that. I got a couple emails uh, a couple weeks ago, Demon Hunter, where they were saying, hey, we love you guys. Keep it up. And uh, Because, you know, when we're sitting here in studio, guys, and we're putting on these shows, and we're doing the live broadcast for you guys, doing the live web show, uh, the only thanks we get is from you guys. And that's enough. That is enough, and that's the payback that we want because, hey, we're your afternoon One of these buddies. days, Sean, we have to figure out how to actually control our chat room and find somebody to sit there and answer questions for people while they ask them. Because I keep looking over and I see like 20 questions have been answered, or people have said 20 things, and I can't read it all and talk on the radio at the same time. So uh, Nitro, Nitro Jill, uh, you know, uh, 
everybody in there. Just uh, I apologize if I missed anything you said. You said towards me because it's scrolling past me so quickly there. But uh, uh, they're getting hot, huh? In the chat room, they're, they're having hot. Some- they're getting interested. And you know what? Uh, you know what's interesting, Sean, is the stuff that's in the news. In the news, it's always hot. It's always exciting. I got to change this up. It's always fresh from the GND and show vaults. Oh. And it and starts it's right. <laughs> right. Now. <laughs> that was the biggest botch in the history of GD Radio. <laughs> Woohoo. Oh, my goodness. Well, no, it wasn't the biggest one we've no, ever it wasn't. had. I think, uh, I think that was It was up I, there, though. It was up there. Well, I talk over you. I can talk over you every once in a while. We can make mistakes. Demon Hunter. Well, you, you, I heard you say, we got to change this up. And I was like, crap, I'm not going to know when to say my line. <laughs> <laughs> he went off. He went off. Uh, it's always hot. It's always fresh. It's always exciting. Live from the GD Show vaults. It starts But right. hey, Sean. What's your problem? There's a woman who believes that her dead husband sent her a, sh- a heart-shaped potato. No way. Uh, and just remember, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to read the news, and that means the G&D drinking game is about to take place. It's going to take place, guys, so get to your refrigerator. No, don't walk away from the computer. Uh, you should have your beer. <laughs> it or starts favorite... right now. <laughs> yeah, you should have your favorite beverage uh, next That's right, right, folks. Every time Sean and I make a mistake, whether we say the wrong name, read the wrong word, uh, just goof Got up, it, you have to take a drink. Now, we uh, there's a little... Note at the bottom here, if you're currently listening to this on a podcast while driving your car or planning to drive your car after this or planning to, like, get up and do anything after the show, uh, please drink responsibly. Uh, don't spill your beer. It's, uh, but <laughs> let's get back to this woman who believes that her husband, her dead husband, yeah. sent her a heart-shaped potato. Oh, what a biggie fries. <laughs> That's right. This comes to us from the Huffington Post, Sean. <laughs> I think all our news this evening comes from the Huffington Post. Thank you, Huffington. When Sally Colburn reached into her a 10-pound bag of potatoes on Wednesday night. 10-pound bag. She figured she'd get a her nourishment, not a message from her dead husband, Jack. Right. I was just frying up some onions and potatoes, she told the Huffington Post. I reached in the bag, and the last potato was shaped. Like a heart. Heart shaped potatoes are uncommon but not unusual. However, Colburn, 70, believes this one was special. Yeah. I know it was a sign from him. She it was? said. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you can choose if you want to drink with that one. <laughs> yeah. I had been missing him. Uh. He died on May 13th. And I've had that bag of potatoes for two and a half months. Oh, man. I reached into the bag, and it was the last one. Jack and Sally Colburn had been married for nearly 50 years when he suddenly, or he succumbed, have a drink, folks, to lung cancer. Oh. I'm terribly sorry, Sally. Yeah. Uh, I would want him back the way he was, she admitted he, I, oh, I'm sorry. Have another drink, folks. I wouldn't want him back the way he was. She admitted he was suffering. Okay. Uh, she still, she is certain the potato was from him. From heaven. Potato from heaven. Potatoes from heaven, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, I, when I first saw the picture, it looked kind of like a bun. I didn't realize that was a potato, but uh, it, 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 it. Kind of heart-shaped there, Sean. Kind of heart-shaped. That's crazy. So do you think it... Uh, wh- wh- here, here's my first question. Why Are you is... going to tell a little old 70-year-old lady that that heart-shaped potato is not from her dead husband? No, I'm not going to tell I her dare that. You. I dare I double. I triple dog dare you. I'm not going to tell her that, but I'm going to laugh at her with the rest of the world. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It could be... Uh, what, what's the... First question. Here we go, guys. What's the shelf life... On potatoes, anyway. What's she doing with the three-month-old potato? The point of having potatoes, they last for months and months and months until they start sprouting little leaves on them. You can keep eating them. Yeah, but she. That's she, why your people, the Irish, she, pretty much lived on them. See, but she had it for. You said it lasts for months. She had it for two and a half months. She had that bag of potatoes. Almost four months. And she did she eat it? Did she? No, she didn't eat it. Did she take a bite out of it or anything? 
Did she eat her husband's heart? Yeah. I mean, Did she you eat know. her dead husband's heart? That's a horrible thing to ask, John. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think that's cute and all. That's a great story. I mean, uh, I just don't understand. How comes everybody that always thinks a dead person is trying to contact him comes in the f- form of toast or fruit or potatoes? I don't understand. A potato chip. They even had a potato chip with the Holy Mary on it. Well, paradelia is a bitch. I guess. Listen to you with your big boy terms on the show. I love this. I love this. I'm going to start dropping the... Listen, this is a rocky road we're going into here. We start loosening the, the, the curtain on this, and it's going to explode. Oh, let's see here. I like it, though. I'm proud of you, Demon Hunter. I got the next uh, segment, the next news segment. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. This also comes out of the Huffington Post, guys. So you're welcome. Thank you, Huffington. Did a UFO hover over a Florida... Pool? I said it like that because there's a question mark. Did a UFO hover over a Florida pool? I don't know. Tell me, Sean. I don't know. Comes out of Huffington Post, guys. Surveillance video captured mysterious lights over Naples, Florida condo pool this week, and the footage is currently being investigated by MUFON, an organization that looks into UFO sightings. Our good friend Tom uh, was MUFON. Remember that? I remember. Yeah. Watch the ABC. Dan, yeah. Dan Freeman. Stanton Freeman, of course. Watch the ABC Action News video report above for the UFO footage from Monday night. You guys can't watch it, but you can go online and Google the flying saucer over the pool. Uh, The saucer-shaped orb reportedly hovered over the pool for 30 minutes. MUFON officials told NBC2 the footage is one of the most fascinating videos they've ever seen. Ready? It was down on the ground, but some of that webbing was longer, and it made a funnel down into the pool. Whatever it was uh, doing in the pool, I don't know. Security officer uh, Debrelli Thomas, drink up guys, told the news station, back in February, other mysterious lights spotted over Cape Cor- Coral, Florida, inspired spooked residents to contact their local NBC News affiliates. Apparently they didn't call the cops, they called the news affiliates, they were so scared. Although, some said the Cape Coral, Coral lights uh, could have been sky lanterns. Other attest that the pattern of movement disqualified that theory. Uh, Meanwhile, UFO sighting experts say UFO claims will increase as use of camera drones becomes more more prevalent prevalent around the world. One such drone, uh, of course, was found in Brazil recently, and it sparked UFO fears. My question, Demon Hunter. Okay. If it was a drone, why would it be so close to a pool taking pictures in uh, Florida? Well, it is Florida. Were there any bikinis around the pool? No nope. young ladies in them? No bikinis with uh, young ladies. See, now that's a drone I wouldn't mind paying for. If they had, biki- <laughs> if they had bikini drones, I'd be like... I want to be able to check the, the photos on the internet. Yeah, but I did watch the video, guys. If you go look it out, uh, UFO saw, flying saucer over pool in Cape Coral, Florida, or whatever. If you go check that out, uh, you see it, and the newsman says it looks just like a drop of water on the camera. I mean, it was kind of... It was kind of weird, didn't it? To me, it kind of looked like either a drop of water on the camera or a moth flying, like, in front of a blurry lens. So are you saying that it's bogus, the story? No, I would never say that, Sean. We never tell people they're wrong. I'm just (coughs) bogus, (coughs) bogus. I I don't... I, I, I... I could easily explain it away, is what I'm saying. Easily explain it! Scotty, beat me up. Yes. Could have been but started. Sean, yeah, you know, there's something everybody needs to watch out for, and that's those fake ghost hunters who are really making meth in the woods. <laughs> is this a story? This is a story, ladies oh. and gentlemen. When you're ghost, when you're hunting ghosts, yeah, things can get methy. Yeah, that's one for the the. Uh, the uh, news journal. Huntington Post for that one. I, I, I have to admit, I like that one. Thank you. Three North Carolina men who said they were they trekked into the forest to look for ghosts yeah. were really making meth, Uh-oh. according to the Caldwell County Sheriff's, who released the their opinion to WCNC. Yeah. Sonny Cly Hyatt, thirty nine, called nine one one late Monday night. Okay. And told the dispatcher he was lost in the woods. The Hickory Daily Record uh, record reported. Okay. Uh, You can have a drink, folks. (laughs) Parties found Hyatt using a GPS coordinator on his phone. But when they rescued him, they started getting suspicious. Danger, Will. Yeah. 
about what Hyatt was doing there in the first place. What was he doing there? Cooking Deputies that. say Hyatt claimed he and his two friends, 38-year-old Thomas Glenn Imbler and 31-year-old Eric John Schmidt. I, I got Schmidt right, folks. You might have to drink for Imbler. <laughs> uh, went, into, went out looking for paranormal activity because of the stories that the woods were haunted. Okay. But he got separated from them and then lost. Okay. That's some investigator, Sean. And, uh, right. Investigators didn't believe Hyatt. Well, whoever believes somebody who says they're going ghost hunting, Sean. Um, yeah, exactly. They continued to grill him, WBTV reported. Deputies say he eventually admitted that he and his buddies were actually out there in the woods to cook up some meth. <laughs> they admit it to it, huh? He, I guess. Uh, I, I guess when you're a meth cooker, eventually uh, it starts to come. You start to come down, and you'll you'll you'll, you'll just admit everything. Uh, then he got into an argument <laughs> when the, they got into an argument when the cook failed. They split up, and the Hyatt got lost. Okay. Deputies also allegedly found one pot shake. I don't know what a pot shake. And bake. Oh, sh- pot, shake, and bake. Have a drink, folks. Meth lab in Hyatt's apartment. Wow. Oh, with right. meth making agre- ingredients. Right. The three men were arrested and charged with manufacturing methamphetamines and uh, possession of methamphetamines and particular chemicals. So, folks, there's the secret. If you want to find ghosts in the woods, um, I guess... To make sure you see them, you have to be high on meth. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, did they find anything? Any evidence? Uh, that they reported something. Oh, the wow. Ghost Man and Demon Hunter show does not think people should do meth, and uh, we do not. Uh, <laughs> we do not support these people oh, at all. Right. And uh, I'm hoping, Sean. I'm hoping I can say that these are not your typical ghost hunters. I hope not. I hope not. Hey, you think we got time for one more news story? We're about. I down think to, we have time for one more news story. We're about down to five minutes. We still got Legend X series. Okay. Okay, we'll do one more. But I'm not giving you another one, Demon Hunter. This is going to be it. That's fine. All right, here we go. Sharks target butts in the Red Sea. Thank you, Huffington Post. Did you hear me right? Sharks target butts in the Red Sea. And, of course, I wanted to read this one because Shark Week, guys, is upon the end. The end has come tonight. I yes, think the, Friday night was technically the last night, but they are doing. Uh, they were showing specials over the weekend. Oh, Friday was it? Yeah, yeah. Dang it. Look! It's Shark Week, they say. So we don't want to make sharks the butt of any jokes in this article. <laughs> that would be asinine. <laughs> oh. huh? That's too, buddy. Thank this guy. This guy is awesome. I want to write to the post here. It's just too bad that sharks are making meals of our butts. A series of recent shark attacks in the Red Sea left researchers puzzled. Because not only are shark attacks rare in the area, tourist hot spots, but these sharks were going directly for beach bums. Ah, there's another one. This guy's awesome. Bite marks can give a good idea as to what kind of shark is viciously, viciously attacking beachgoers. But the recent bites were too big to find any teeth impressions. However, after a fourth attack, the unarmed victim was able to give authorities the description they needed to identify the hungry shark. An oceanic white tip which gets its name because it usually never leaves the open ocean for shallow water. But why go for posterior? Huh? That's what it says. That's all. That's where it leaves off. And this is what uh, I, don't, I don't know, Sean. But uh, you know what? Why would a shark just go? Maybe he. Maybe it was after the other white meat. Yeah, I guess he left it. Uh, ah! I guess he left it open uh, right there. Just big question. Left the. Uh, it's kind of like a show. You just leave it open. Leave it open at the end. It's. It uh, the you end. know, Sean. You know, I'm scared to death of sharks. I don't go near the water. Yeah, so, but you never uh, got bit in the uh, areola. You know. Are they but uh, you know they do go for the fattiest or... portion of somebody, maybe, uh, or of their prey. So mm. maybe that's what they were aiming for. Well, you know, if it came after me, it would be the uh, hey G and D G and D exclusive Legend X series, guys. 
Dun, dun, dun. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. There's no zombie reports this week because there are no zombies. Uh, if they're not on TV, they're not out there in real life. So this week we go straight into the stories that Sean and I hunt down across the country to tell you what folklores are going on possibly in your own backyard. From you off, can go out and find them for yourself or you can listen in here at Legend X. I like that. And then you another show. I like that. I stepped on it. I'm sorry about that. Now we'll have to practice that one, guys. For Mothman, Bigfoot, Yeti, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it, Bud Wedgies, Troll People, Lizard People, Mothman, this is your G&D Legend X. Dun, dun, dun. And it starts right now. It starts right now. <laughs> hey, Sean, this week we're talking Ohio. What's round on both ends and high in the middle? Uh... Ohio. This girl I dated, but <laughs> way back when. Was that bad? Back when. And the Loveland Frog. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. The Loveland Frog, aka the Loveland Blizzard, is an alleged frog like creature that has the body of a human and the head and face of a frog with green, leathery skin and webbed feet. Ooh. Is alleged to stand about four feet tall, or 1.2 meters, if you're listening to us over the pond, uh, across the pond, and uh, stands upright and <laughs> walks. If you're aliens, over the pond while you're hovering. Over the pond. Yes. <laughs> if, you're, if you're floating down over the uh, pool in Florida, yeah. uh, we're over the pool. Yeah, uh, it's named after the alleged location of its sighting, Loveland, Ohio. Loveland, Ohio. So basically, Sean, what we have here is either a really big frog yeah. or a really small creature from the Black Lagoon. Okay. Well, couldn't the creature from the Black Lagoon be, in fact, a frog? Well, this one's only four feet tall. Maybe this is son of the creature of the Black Lagoon. Four feet tall. In the picture I'm showing our listeners, and we always give them the accurate accounts here, in the picture I'm showing, the drawing... It's got the frog man. It says, oh my god, it's the Loveland frog, and he's carrying a girl. Well, the, the on. one where he's carrying the girl is the creature from the Black Lagoon. No, no. No, no. Well, it could be. It looks like a frog, but it's more aquatic than a frog. Can you be more aquatic than a frog? You can't, can't you? you, you uh, well, it's tough. I mean, you could be a fish. Yeah. Did they say where they've reported seeing these guys, in case we go down there and check them out? Well, they, they have been reported, and you're going to make me look that up, aren't you? Well, I wonder. I wonder if, uh, you know, you like see them in the backyard, or... Yeah. Well, no, it's been sp spotted, in, like I said, again, in Loveland, Ohio. Uh, the first sighting was in 1955. 1955, okay. All right. And uh, the majority of sightings were actually back in 1972, when I was just uh, a youngin, Sean. A youngin? But, uh, what was that? A youngin? A youngin. I like that term. <laughs> That's and, one of them but, uh, backwoods terms, you know? <laughs> Doggy. Jake Clamp. Hey, doggies. <laughs> um, Jake that's Clamp. like when I know I, I turned into my father when children were playing out in the yard and I ran out and go, Yo, get away here. Yeah, you say, Get out of my yard. That's when you know you turn into an old fogey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it, uh, it doesn't actually say the exact location, only that Loveland, Ohio has had several sightings of it. Okay. Uh, it does say that uh, it has been seen to jump the rails into the Little Miami River in Loveland, Ohio. Little Miami River. We're going to have to go on the trail of that guy. I don't know how we'll bait him, but we'll check it out, Demon Hunter. Flies. Big flies. Really big flies. <laughs> then we'll be chasing big flies. The monstrous big flies from Loveland, Ohio. Oh, my God. They, they must have some really big flies to yeah. get that frog. I'm glad they got the frogs. There's nothing else. But, uh, no, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it has been sighted. I mean, they've, you know, you know the love of the Mothman that you have down in there and, uh, in Point Pleasant, they have the statue to them and everything like that. You get that in uh, Loveland. They have statues to the Loveland frog. They do. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's obviously an important part of their culture, if nothing else, right? Yeah, you would think so. Demon Hunter, the hour is up on us, sir. The huh? guest segment is arrived. Oh, my goodness. Has. Is. Has. Has arrived. Has. It is here. It has arrived. Carrie's going to hate us tonight. She's going to be like, Jesus Christ. You guys ever go to school? <laughs> She's a professor, for gosh sakes. Well, you and I uh, graduated kindergarten. That's true. Okay, Demon Hunter. Guys, you guys ready for this? I don't know why this thing isn't... Uh, yeah, we need all the... Here we go. Tonight's guest, up next, professor of mythology, folklore, 
Actress from Friday 13th, Part 6, The New Twilight Zone, and many, many more from the shows we loved and grew up on. Actress Carrie Noonan, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Band tonight, here comes the mummies, Demon Hunter. We'll be right back. We'll be after right back. After this. After this. Dun, dun, dun.
Hey, it's Don Wildman from Mysteries at the Museum on Travel Channel, and you're listening to the Ghost Man and Demon Hunter Show. Hey, welcome back, listeners around the world. This is your Mystifying Oracle Radio, your Ghost Man and Demon Hunter show. Hello, hello. What's going on, guys? Hello, hello. You know, Sean, I got to say, when, when we go to break, I call the guest, and I don't get to hear the music, and all of a sudden this song came back on, and all I heard was, boote, boote, boote. <laughs> and I'm a little worried about what you might have been playing during the break there, Sean. <laughs> of course, our band this week, guys, was Here Come the Mummies. Check out them at herecomethemummies.com. And the name of the song, Demon Hunter, was Let Me Get Some Booty. <laughs> so. Hey, man, I, these are artists. Did, was it a pirate <laughs> song? I... I don't know, man. But hey, without further ado, because we're already running late, I just want to say tonight is special for me because, like I was telling you before, every once in a while you get a special person on, and uh, the, she's just great in every way, and I'm a huge fan of hers. And uh, I first fell in love with Carrie when I seen her on The Twilight Zone, of course, Friday the 13th, Part 6. Uh, let, just let me bring her in real quick. Professor of Mythology and Folklore, guys, from Champlin College. She's also the actress from Friday the 13th, Part Six in the new Twilight Zone and so many more great films she made appearances on and great television series uh, as we were growing up and of course Nightmare on the 13th Floor. Please help me welcome actress, professor, Carrie Noonan. Carrie, what's going on, sis? Hi, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> we're doing better now. <laughs> it was all worth it just for that introduction, wasn't it, Carrie? It, uh... I know. Well, we had that song playing, Carrie, and I didn't. <laughs> I know when I hit the mute button, and the Nathan and the guests can hear the song, and I didn't look up the song, and I heard, uh, let me get that booty, and I said, you know what, maybe I should wait to the very end. <laughs> as soon as I hit mute, he goes, booty, booty, and yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, that's okay, Sean. I was taking the extra time to tell Carrie about the huge crush you have on her. And... <laughs> that's great. She'll never come back on. Thanks, Nathan. <laughs> Appreciate that. That's true. <laughs> but anyway, we got Carrie in the house tonight. To, and like I said, Carrie, I you've done so many great things. And it was so hard to get a hold of you. That's why you're like the, the gem in the rough here. We I had to look everywhere to find out how to get you on the show. And uh, you don't see many people being able to get a hold of you. So this is an honor, you know, to have you on tonight. Thank you for persisting. Well, yes, I am. I'm like the little ant that could, right? Moving he around. is persistent. I got to say that. 99% of our guests are on just to shut him up. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Carrie, you had an amazing uh, run at it with film and everything else, and then you went into being a professor. And I guess let's just start out uh, with when you grew up. What was it like being a young Carrie, and, and where did you grow up at, and how did you get into acting? Well, I grew up in a lot of different places. I was born in New York City. I lived uh, for a couple years in Westchester County, and then I, my family moved to New Jersey, and I lived there till I was about eight. And then we moved to Michigan, just outside of Detroit, and I lived there till I was ten. Then we moved back to New Jersey, and I uh, lived there till I was thirteen. And then we moved out to Los Angeles, and I lived there until five years ago. Oh my goodness! And now, now I live in Burlington, Vermont. Oh, Burlington. My wife attended Burlington University for her bachelor's degree. Oh, awesome. It's beautiful up here. It is, but I got to say, you guys have mosquitoes that could fit in our <laughs> yeah. uh, cryptozoology. <laughs> yeah, my, my husband does not like the mosquitoes. They tend to leave me alone pretty much, but they tend to eat my husband and my daughter alive. I came up there for a, uh, a fireworks session once, and uh, it... it I just remember that they pretty much ate myself, my wife, my roommate, everybody. I, I remember leaving, buying a ma magnet that said, thank you for coming to Vermont. It had a mosquito on it. It said, please send more tourists. <laughs> <laughs> like the sharks, man. That, that's cute. That's cute. Vermont. That's you asked how I got into acting. Well, when I was little, I used to put on plays in my backyard all the time. Oh, wow. My sister, my friends, be in them. And um, then I moved to California where they had a drama class in 7th and 8th grade and I started doing that and I had a great um, drama department in my high school. Then I went to UCLA to get a bachelor's degree in theater arts and I was lucky enough to be there at the same time as amazingly talented people. Um, Tim Robbins and I won an acting award together over there and um, a lot of other great people. Um, and um, then I just pursued 
acting in Los Angeles, and I did it until I wasn't getting auditions anymore, and then I decided to do something else, and I thought, what else do I love as much as I love acting? And the answer was folklore and mythology. So, because I've never been a practical person, I decided to get a PhD in folklore and mythology. <laughs> oh, wow. See, we, uh, actually, we find that incredibly practical. Incredible. Uh, <laughs> Sean and I have spent every free weekend we have traveling around studying folklore and mythology. You at least got the degree to go with it. It's, uh, <laughs> yes, with, and that's why I get the big. <laughs> <laughs> we need to come talk to your uh, classes out there, Carrie, because that's actually what we started out doing. Um, we go to these places and we meet the people that have said they've seen these things. We go to the location where they're at and uh, we interview them. We talk to these people because, you know, you've never <laughs> experienced Americana and, uh, you know, these <laughs> these tales and these legends until you've spoken with these people and seen these things. And some of them are kind of kooky and others believe it. And I believe what they're saying. I mean, this stuff's happening out there, you know. And look, this is the sort of work that, as a scholar, I call that doing field work. You're going out and you're interviewing people and you're getting the information they have to get about their experience and you're uh, getting it out there. So that's great. Can well, see, can you just manage to turn our field work into a degree so Sean and I have something to show for all we do? Uh, Come on, Karen. I had a magic wand. It, um, it, it, but no, it is. We go out there and we talk to these folks and they do believe what they're telling yeah. us and... Uh, you know, sometimes Sean and I look at each other and our eyebrows go up and uh, we're like, well, thank you very much. And uh, we, we walk away and sometimes we just sit there and go, well, this is interesting. They say if you go into that cemetery at midnight and uh, drink a beer and leave your beer on this tombstone, the devil's going to pop up and play gin rummy, drum, <laughs> gin rummy with you. So let's go in there and have a beer and leave it on the tombstone. Yeah. So it's, well, uh, you know, there's a folklorist called Bill Ellis who calls that legend tripping. Ah, <laughs> common American pastime, especially for teenagers, to go to the site of a local legend, usually with the aid of, you know, some substances that I'm not going to condone, <laughs> and, um, uh, and see what happens. And that's a very common American teenage and, you know, young people experience. And you guys are just doing it um, in a little more official capacity. <laughs> but I always tell my students that as a folklorist, I don't really care whether these things are true or not. What interests me are the stories that are told about it yes. and the stories people have about it and what that says about us as a culture or that place as a region about what's important to us, what we find plausible. And, you know, I don't know. There's all kinds of interesting stuff out there, but I'm not a debunker or someone who proves things. I'm somebody who documents what people are doing and what people believe. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. In fact, when Sean and I first started working with television producers, that's what we told them we like to do. It's not about what actually happens, but it's what people have to say, yes. what they believe. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what, that's what I did for years. I traveled around, and it wasn't even about ghosts, or it wasn't about uh, Bigfoot or anything like that. I would go, and if somebody said, I believe in voodoo, I'd stay with them for three months and learn what they believe about voodoo. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's... It's about the Basically belief. what anthropologists and folklorists do. We do the same thing, and then we make an article about it. See, Sean, you were right. There's, there, there's some way we got to get paid for what we do. That's <laughs> right. I, I hate to break it to you, but I, I have very rich need to be a folklorist. But I can't need to be, like, you know, I talk to the expert, but usually very rich. And, um, but because I agree, I do thank it. I have a nice month at a college, and so that's but um, if you figure out how to uh, make vocal or you know, share that with me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, but, you're not getting any feedback there or any echo, are you? I did for a minute. Okay, I'm trying to fix it for you there. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, that maybe we can get a sugar mama, uh, Nathan, and we can uh, <laughs> there you go. get a sugar mama and just say, listen, lady, we're doing important stuff here. Just support me, you know? Twinkies. Hey, you know, I, I'm not uh, opposed to a sugar daddy, Sean. I will uh Sugar I will mama. <laughs> I will gladly trade you out for money to go do what we do. That's, that is how committed he is. That's I will it. gladly trade Sean out to a sugar daddy to uh, to go do our research. That's terrific. That's terrific. But Carrie, uh, you know, guys, the first time, um, well, of course, I seen Carrie when uh, when I was growing up on, uh, of course, Friday Thirteenth Part Six, and that was, you know a legacy of films and then part six was amazing jason lives i mean i think that was the best i really do but i seen carrie it was and i remember i called you nathan and i said dude i just seen the wildest twilight zone and it really got me do you remember that 
I do. I and, do. And I had watched Twilight Zone since I was a kid, guys. And mind you, this isn't the old Rod Serling Twilight Zone. This was the new Twilight Zone. You guys get it because we're all the same 30s, 40s, 50s that listen to this show. Or at least that's what our stats say. So uh, the new Twilight Zone comes on one day, and it's on Chiller Network or whatever. And I'm sitting here. It's a beautiful fall day. And you know I've always loved New England and Salem. And I seen this, a uh, message from Charity uh, had come on chiller and i'm like okay well you know it's a twilight zone so you almost got to watch it so the music starts playing and it's a beautiful you know salem village and all this stuff and i'm thinking oh it's right up my alley so and i see this little uh settler type uh, what would you call it carrie pilgrim pilgrim yeah yeah it's, it's set in puritan uh, new england it takes place in 1700 right and she comes out on the stage, and she's all, you know, she's real innocent and everything, like, you know, back then. And, and she gets convicted of witchcraft, or, or not convicted, but they, she gets charged with, with witchcraft because when it starts out, she gets sick, and the guy in, in our time right now gets sick, and they start seeing through each other's eyes. So you got Charity, and she's... Uh, okay, Sean, you're, you're, you're getting into spoilers here. No, yeah, no, so, no, okay. no. If you so, haven't seen it by now... <laughs> But anyway, she sees through. They see through each other's eyes. So she's seeing- let let, let, let uh, Carrie tell the story. Come on. <laughs> well, without any spoilers, you just have to find out what happens if a girl in seventeen hundred and a boy in the modern day start talking about what they see when they see through each other's eyes. And back in seventeen hundred, it might not be so good. So you have to figure out. Uh, you have to watch it to see what happens and how we deal with it. But yeah, I loved when I read the script for that. Uh, that was a year when there were several anthology shows that came out. There was Amazing Stories. Which uh, I have to admit, I loved Amazing Stories. Yeah, it was great. And um, there was the new Twilight Zone, and there was another one that I can't remember right now. <clears throat> but all of us actors were all excited because those were series that didn't have a regular cast. So it meant more jobs for everybody. <laughs> and each, well, it was a great thing. Um, each hour had several little episodes in it. Like mine, originally... My Twilight Zone episode was 40 minutes long, and it aired with a short one called Examination Day. Uh, then later, when they sold the show to syndication, they put in a little more footage, and they elongated it and chopped it into two, so it became two half-hour uh, segments with commercials. But So I was so excited when I got the script, and I was obsessed with the Salem Witch Trials when I was young. I read everything I could about them. I used to force my poor little sister to play Puritans with me. This was my, you know, I just loved it. And I thought, oh my gosh, this has my name written on it. I've got to do this script. So I went in and um, I was auditioning for the smaller part of Ursula, Charity's friend. And I saw one of my good friends from UCLA there and she was also auditioning. And um, I decided to pluck up my courage and I asked the casting director, can I read for the lead? And they sort of hemmed and hawed, and I think they didn't want to say no to my face. So they said, well, we have to go to a meeting. And I said, that's okay, I'll wait for you. So I called my regular job, and I said, listen, I'm going to be late. And I just stayed there and waited, and I read for, as charity for them. And then I went home, and I thought, oh, please, 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 please. And that word, no, you didn't get charity, and you didn't get Ursula either. Your friend Jenny Parsons got Ursula. Oh. Said, ah, there's no justice in this world. And then a couple weeks later, I get this call. It was Friday. I worked in a law firm in downtown, and I got a call from my agent that said, how fast can you get up to CBS Studios? And this is like L.A., Friday, rush hour traffic, which means everything takes forever. But I said, I'm leaving now. I'm leaving now. And I got there. And I said, okay, don't get your hopes up. Maybe it's not charity, but it's just nice they thought of you. And they said, we want you to read for charity. We've had a casting problem. And I was like, okay. So I went in, and I read the scene. The whole room is filled with people, so I was nervous. Mm. After I finished, the casting director, Gary Zuckerberg, said, okay, Carrie, that was great. Now I'd like you to look at this other scene that you haven't seen before. Go outside and take a look at it and then come back in and we'll have you read that. And I said, okay. And this man over to my left said, like he sort of like made a huge noise. And I thought, oh God, that guy hates me. I'm going to be really good. <laughs> and the guy who made the weird noise came out. That was Phil Daguerre, the exec producer, and he said, we don't need to see you read again. You're hired. Go over to Wardrobe, and you'll be fine. you start on Monday. <laughs> and I was like, ah! And it turned out they had hired Justine Bateman because they wanted a name, and they had filmed for three days with her off-camera being the voice for the boy Robert Duncan McNeil, who later went on to uh, be in, oh, what was the Star Trek with the female captain? Oh, the, uh, the Voyager. Yeah, Voyager. Star Trek Voyager. 
but he went on to do that. But um, he was only 20 at the time. And um, so I got the part. And Justine Bateman, apparently she couldn't really handle the periodness of the back-in-time stuff, and they, and they thought I could. See, it was so all that childhood to... play that... Yeah, yeah. So I got to do... I also love Shakespeare. The author, Alan Brennan, who became a friend of mine, he had adapted a short story by William M. Lee called A Message from Charity. He allowed me to change the grammar when sometimes it was wrong mm. with use of the and thou and verb forms that were not always correct. <laughs> but I didn't correct, and it still makes me cringe when I hear it because I, I thought I was being too pushy and correcting too much. Uh. But... Uh, but I just loved doing that. I got to work with uh, James Crawford, who's an amazing actor, and Gerald Hyken, who's another amazing actor. I later did a play with him. Right. And, uh, it was just a dream come true to do it. Well, well I- you pulled the role perfect. And I got to tell you, Carrie, the point I was trying to get to when I was talking about the that episode is it blew me away as well as it did a lot of people because I told a lot of people, hey, you got to check this out. And I think it was just, of course, the voice at the end. I don't know who I should Google that, whoever did the Twilight Zone voices at the yeah. end. But it was a perfect love story. You know, I didn't ever get in chick flicks or nothing. But, you know, it was a it was <laughs> it was not a ghost piece but it kind of was guys you just have to check it out a message from charity the new twilight zone so but i i gotta say i agree with what you're saying with the the way people speak especially nowadays when they remake classics and people don't use the proper language sean and i joke all the time because i was raised in a very pennsylvania deutsch area oh yeah and i've corrected my speaking when i actually speak now but when i write i still write in a very classic, you know, historically old English fashion. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends said, you know, if I was writing something about a farm, I'd write, throw the horse over the he- fence some hay. Right. You know, right. and it's... Uh, well, it's, that's a very dialect-specific uh, way of saying that, because that's correct in German. Correct. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's just the way I write still, but yeah. I, I get annoyed when I do see period pieces that aren't done with period speech. <laughs> well, you're a writer's best friend, I tell you. <laughs> I was telling him before, Carrie, I said, you know, she's a professor coming on, and, and half the time we can't complete a sentence on this show. So <laughs> I said, we're going to be in trouble, man. She's going to be grading us on a curve, I hope. But so you've got to remember, we have a drinking game during when we read the news, so that every time we mispronounce something, people can have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I had a question for you. Since we, yeah. we were here with you, and you are a, a professor of mythology and folklore, and you were also in the Friday the 13th uh, films, was Jason a zombie or a demon? I just have to know. <laughs> That's such a good question, because they kept changing who he was all along. Whereas, <laughs> look, in the first movie, I'm hoping I'm not spoiling anything for anyone. But if they haven't seen it yet, too bad for them. Spoiler! Yeah. <laughs> so in the first movie, it wasn't actually even Jason at all. It was his mom. Mm-hmm. And um, so they, they do keep changing him. The one uh, that I did, uh, part six, they decided that part five had been such a sort of disappointment to everybody that they just pretended that five didn't happen. And they, they took it up from where four left off. Kind, now, kind of like know. Highlander 2, the apology. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and you have to understand something about me. I don't like slasher films. That's funny that I'm... But, um, so I had to call my sister, who loves all horror movies, just like my husband does as well. Mm-hmm. I like more spooky horror movies, but not, not gory so when I had the audition for this movie, I had to call my sister and say, all right, what's the storyline so far? Because I didn't know. No. Um, I just knew something vaguely about a hockey mask. <laughs> Jason is, at least in part six, he's dead and he's rotting in the grave, but he is revived a la Frankenstein. Again, I hope I'm not spoiling anything for anyone, <laughs> but um, because they dig him up, Tommy Jarvis digs him up and stakes him with um, a metal... Uh, rod because he's so angry and it's raining out of course and some lightning hits the rod and reanimates Jason so in that sense it's almost like a Frankenstein's monster in a sort of way so he's sort of a revenant he's not really a, he's not really a zombie because all right there's two kinds of zombies I'm speaking as a scholar now mm-hmm. there's zombies that come out of the tradition of Haitian voodoo which are people whose souls are not in their body, but they, they are being bound and controlled by a sorcerer uh, to do work. 
And in a way, you can think of that as a metaphor for slavery, which was happening in, in Haiti for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that these are bodies that are controlled by someone, and they, can, they don't have any volition. But then you get uh, to George Romero's Night of the Living Dead kind of zombie, which kind of redefined what zombies are. And then there's sort of these undead bodies that rise up and eat brains. So Jason doesn't eat brains, although he does kill people. And I remember one of the stage directions in our script said, when uh, the sheriff uh, shoots Jason and it doesn't stop him, the stage direction said, nothing stops this undead super killer. So, I don't know. He's not really, is he a demon? I mean, I know in a later episode, a later version, he goes to hell. You know, I don't really know. Well, apparently, it doesn't stop him at the box office because there's like 23 of them. <laughs> Friday the <Yeah>. teeth. <laughs> One of the things that I liked about part six a lot was the script written by Tommy McLaughlin, who's a great writer and director. And he wrote it um, and directed it. And it has a really nice tongue in cheek t- uh, sense of humor. He um, has the little kids reading No Exit um, as they're trapped in the cabins. He has these uh, two little boys being really cynical about how they're all going to be goners. Um, he has the sex, the, you know, the sex scene that you must have in one of these uh, is kind of played for laughs. Uh, he also has an old grave, grave digger comes upon the grave of Jason that's been dug up in the first scene, and he starts to put the dirt back, and he says... I don't know why somebody wants to dig up the grave of Jason, and he looks right in the camera and he says, some people have a strange sense of entertainment. (laughs) So it it had a really nice sort of sense of humor while also being scary. And each death scene that they shot, they shot three times, one mildly gory, one medium gory, and one very gory. Because the film series, it always wanted to have an R rating, but not an X rating. Mm Mm-hmm. They had to walk a line where it had to be gory enough to be scary and have the audience like it, and yet not gory enough so that they would get a bad <clears throat> rating and uh, not have anyone be able to come see their film, their target audience being teenagers. Now, yeah. Carrie, i got to ask you, because we were talking before the show, or, or this week, and Carrie brought up some really cool facts about Friday 13th, or one cool fact. And first time ever, guys, here on the G&D show, I don't know how many people know about this. I'm sure there's a small group. But, Carrie, would you tell them about that one scene and the, the funny thing you were telling me about that not so many people know about? <laughs> well, one thing, we all had a really great time making this film. Uh, it was in March, uh, always at night. In uh, Georgia, we were shooting, so it was cold. But we all bonded together, and the crew was really great. And some of the crew got silly because, you know, you're shooting from 6 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning every day. Oh, yeah. It just, you know, sort of high-spirited, and a lot of them were in their 20s. So they started sneaking rubber chickens into as many shots as they could. <laughs> <laughs> and so when we would look at sort of dailies, you know, when you see what was shot that day, you often saw shots like um, Tony Goldwyn reaches into, a, um, into the glove compartment for a gun, and instead of a gun, there's a rubber chicken. Or Jason is carrying the headless body of Renee Jones over his shoulder. You see him doing that in one of the shots with a rubber chicken instead of Renee's body double thing. <laughs> and so they just kept doing that to be goofy. And they were all cut out, of course, with one exception. At the very, very end, the character Megan, played by Jennifer Cook, she runs out of the cabin. It's dark. It's night. The moon is shining. And there's all these branches You see the the light coming through the branches, and the shadows of the branches are all over her as she's looking towards the lake to see what's happening with with Tommy and um, Jason. And those shadows are made by guys holding these metal poles with branches stuck in them, and they shake them in front of the light to make the shadows that you want. They're not actual tree shadows. And one of the guys had put a rubber chicken in place of one of the branches. So if you look on, on Jennifer Cook's body, you can see vaguely the shadow of a rubber chicken and his two legs. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, Gary. And you know what, guys? That you got to go look right now. It's on Netflix. Uh, Friday Thirteenth Part Six. You got to check it out. So it's at the end, right? Yeah. It's okay. just before the very end. You know, it, it's funny because the very first Friday the Thirteenth was uh, the Camp Crystal Lake was filmed in Blairstown, New Jersey. Oh, was it? And uh, I grew up in Newton, New Jersey, which is right down the road from there. In fact, my grandmother was from Blairstown, and she's buried there. And, you know, for our junior high school, like, graduation picnic, they took us 
to the camp where they filmed Friday the 13th. <laughs> How and that, fun. that's where we had our picnic. So being the mischievous person I am, I spent the day convincing all the girls that it was based on a true story and then setting up things to scare the heck out of them while they were on their, <laughs> their picnic. But uh, it, you know, so I've always had a love for that, that oh, whole series great. in the films. Yeah, well, we, uh, we filmed it in a place called Hard Labor Creek State Park in Georgia, near Atlanta. Oh, wow. Town of Covington, actually. We stayed in Covington. You but know, you It was a really good, you, creepy uh, atmosphere. I remember when they were shooting my death scene, uh, the guy who played Jason in our film was C.J. Graham. And he wasn't an actor. He was a bouncer at a bar. That's how they found him. Mm-hmm. And so he didn't kind of get the whole acting thing. <laughs> and um, because I'd been hanging out with everybody, you know, C.J. doesn't scare me. He's a nice guy. You know, I'm not scared of C.J., and I wanted to really, really be scared because I have a couple of fake outs right before my death and I really wanted the audience to be as scared as my character was supposed to be during that whole sequence. So I asked CJ very nicely, I said, could you please, in between takes, please don't talk to me because I don't want to think of you as CJ. I want to think of you as Jason. Mm-hmm. And he said, what? <laughs> said, no, look, I, you know, I just want to be really scared of you so I don't want to hang out with you in between takes. I just want to, you know, encounter you as the scary Jason. And he goes, what? <laughs> and so finally I said, just don't talk to me, okay? <laughs> Stay away. So I'm sure he thought I was really weird and pretentious, but at least that way I was able to create that fear in myself when I saw him come out in the hockey mask. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so that was, see, that was pretty fun. See, now, Sean, you can feel better because all those times I tell you, don't talk to me, it's because I don't want to think of you as Sean Burris. I want to think of you as the ghost man. Right. No? Right. Got it. You know, I kind of miss that, Carrie. Do you ever miss it? We miss being on the road with the... I mean, it gets lame when you're out there, but being on the set for four, five, six, seven, eight hours a night and then going back to some hotel room and sleeping, you miss it once you're done with it, you know? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> it's a real bonding experience because you are all going through it together and you're all you're a unit, so right. it's nice. It is. But I tell you what, Carrie, uh, it's been so great having you on. And uh, you stole my heart and you stole America's heart with uh, The Twilight Zone and all the work you did on so many different shows. And, of course, Friday the 13th, uh, Part 6. And uh, you are awesome, me lady. I have two things to say before we have to end our evening with Carrie. Carrie, uh, you're, you're a folklorist. You're a, uh, myth- you're, stud- you're a professor of mythology. What's your favorite folklore or myth? Oh, gosh. That's such a hard question. Oh, God, I hate answering questions like this. Uh, I can't choose. I would say, all right, if I'm going to stick a spooky story. Yes. Yes. I would say. Yes, spooky. I used to get scared out of my mind when I was a kid by what I used to call babysitter stories. They were these urban legends about maniacs who would prey upon young girls and like one version is um when a stranger calls they made a movie out of it right right but we used to tell that story when we were at slumber parties when i was between 10 and 12 years old and that used to scare me so much but i also have to say that um i went through a phase of being really afraid of vampires when i was about 18 and i i was just petrified of vampires and kept all my grandmother's rosaries all over the place, just in case. <laughs> but other than that, I have to say, I really love all the Irish myths and legends. Oh, Celtic, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I, I've got, I don't want to scare you, Carrie, but I'm actually an Irish vampire, and I'm calling from inside your house. <laughs> no! no. <laughs> hey, that's actually a good movie, guys. Let's pitch that, all three of us. <laughs> the, uh, it was and, an and Irish my other vampire. Part of it is, like, if people want to track down some of the work you've done, obviously, like you said, you don't get paid for your writing, but it's out there. Where can they find your information? Well, um, all my film work is listed on IMDb. Um, there's a... Uh, uh, there's a DVD version of the new Twilight Zone that also has a commentary track by me and the author. Um, and, of course, there's DVDs with extras for Friday the 13th Part 6, in addition to, of course, you know, you can find it on YouTube and stuff like that. But um, my scholarly work is mostly in journals like Western Folklore, and um, I just had an article published about St. Bridget of Ireland and the miracles that she did about food in a new book called Bridget the son of womanhood. 
So I'm like in the sky, that kind of stuff. You and me, we're going to talk, Carrie. we got to set you up with a web page where people could just find you and find all the stuff you links to everything <laughs> you've done. That would be cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. This has been a ball. Thank you, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. You're awesome. You want to stay on the line real quick? Sure. Okay, hold on one second. Guys, we're going to close out the show. You want to close out the show, Demon Hunter? I suppose we could close out the show, Sean. I was, uh, I, I was lost in the uh, magnificence that is Carrie. She is awesome, guys. Hey, special thanks to tonight's guest, Carrie Noonan, everybody. Special thanks to Creations by Souls Denounce. That's soulsdenounce.com. Special thanks to Midnight Syndicate for the tunes. Hey, from the back roads of America, this has been another Haunted Spook Show exclusive interview. Don't go change in America. You know we won't. Demon Hunter? Because we love you. We love you guys. Check out uh, next week's guest, Andrea Perrin, real-life survivor of the new movie, The Conjuring, from the house that the new movie, The Conjuring, is based on. Guys, we'll see you next week. It's been a rough show. Good night, everybody. (laughs) 